And the Bearcats ranked seventh in the country have stormed to a 6-0 record. Luke Fickle's squad has been lights out on defense, holding opponents to just under 12 points per game. You earn every yard when you have to deal with the Bearcats. I'm pleased to be joined by the head coach at Cincinnati, Luke Fickle. Uh, Luke, congratulations on the, on the great start. The way your team has played defense, and I know you guys have been much more explosive on offense lately. I mean, your quarterback can go 90 yards running the ball and drop of a hat. But I'm interested in a philosophical question. We've heard even Nick Saban say that championships can't be won solely by defensive-oriented teams. You've got to be explosive on offense. As a guy who's built programs around defense, how, what's your reaction to that? How do you feel about that now? I, I heard that a couple weeks ago, and I read that, and I, 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 it was a pit in my stomach. I, I thought we were there was a few of us still left that were holding on to the you know play great defense and defense wins championships. But I think more than anything, I, I think all of us understand that if you don't have some type of balance, um, and, I, and I mean that in, in offense, defense, and specialties, but I don't. I think if you don't have a quarterback, I think it's really difficult because. The quarterback in general just makes everybody better. And I'm not saying they got to be the greatest in the world, but they create confidence in a lot of different areas, um, whether you, in theory, are a defensive-oriented team or an offensive-oriented team. Um, the balance is really going to be the key, hopefully not just offenses anymore. And, and how has Desmond Ritter been able to do that for your team offensively? Well, I think he's just kind of settled in. I mean, I think at some point in time, um, he had a lot of pressure on him last year uh, and even going into the start of this year that, you know, he wanted to show all the different things he can do. And I think when he really kind of settles in and, and is able to use his feet and kind of, you know, even get himself into a rhythm a little bit, sometimes running the football, um, it really kind of calms him down. I hate to say it, but sometimes taking a hit um, for a guy who's as, as competitive as he is, I think just makes him better. Your secondary, I mean, your whole defense has been terrific, but you've got so many standouts, it seems, in the back end uh, of your defense, and you guys have faced some really potent passing attacks and been able to handle them well. What's, what's been the strongest point of your defense up to this point in the season? Well, I, I think our ability to handle, um, you know, some, some adversity, not that we've had a ton of it. I mean, we've been, we've been pretty fortunate. But I mean that when, when a guy goes down and, and somebody else has to step up. I mean, we are going to play a lot of on-body coverage. Uh, I'm not saying it's all the time. It's not press on every single snap. Uh, but the confidence that our guys have created um, to be able to play that, to challenge things, and still go after the football. We've been very fortunate to get some turnovers and a lot of interceptions uh, playing a lot of on-body coverage. And that doesn't normally happen unless you've really built the confidence in those guys. So. Uh, I think it's a combination, but I think more than anything, those guys really feel comfortable in what they're doing and, and have been really aggressive. You guys have dealt with some disruptions, as it seems like virtually everybody in college football has as it pertains to the coronavirus. At this point in the season, what is your concern? What is that like uh, week to week, day to day, uh, wondering how that might impact your team? <laughs> oh, it's, I, I hope the other coaches and the players don't think about it as much as I do because um, it's exhausting, you know, when you're testing three times a week and you're hanging on, uh, personally a every single test and, and every result, but it, it is what it is. I think we have done a really good job, but we've got to be able to find a way to live with the different things that we're going to face the entire season, whether it's COVID, whether it's social injustice, whether it's postponing a game, uh, whether it's playing on a Friday night, I mean, there's a lot of different things. And I think that's the whole the whole focus when we were in camp about, hey, how are we going to handle all the different adversities that are going to come this year? And a game on Friday the 13th coming up against East Carolina this week. Uh, still a couple weeks away, Luke, from the first uh, college football playoff rankings being released. How should your team be evaluated? Uh, strength of schedule probably is not going to match up with some, <laughs> although the remaining strength of schedule compares pretty favorably to some perceived as the upper crust. How should the committee evaluate your team? Well, I, I always believe it's going to be wins and losses. I mean, that's pretty simple. Uh, but I really think it's going to come down to how you're playing at the end of the year. I mean, I, in, in all that we've seen throughout this entire uh, season, but in, in general, the past two seasons, they're going to find the teams that are playing best at the end of the year. And obviously for us, that means you got to keep winning. Um, but for a lot of teams outside of, you know, the Clemsons of the world, I mean, if you're playing your best football at the end of the year, I think everybody knows you're going to have some type of shot. And that's all you can ask for. Um, is to continue to find a way to, no matter what, through all the adversities, through injuries, through COVID, if you're playing your best football at the end of the year, uh, I think they'll give somebody or uh, somebody like us a shot. How do you think your team stacks up against uh, teams perceived to be in the upper crust, teams from the SEC, ACC, Big Ten, whatever it might be? 
Well, we faced Ohio State last year, and we didn't fare real well. Uh, and I think we gained a lot from it. I think that it was a big turning point for us, and it kind of made our season last year to, for us to realize where we needed to go if we wanted to compete with the best. And I think that we've been challenged in a lot of ways um, with a lot of the teams, and, and in particular a lot of the, the skilled athletes that we've seen this year from, from our opponents. Uh, but I think we're on, on the – on the cusp of really being able to, you know, get in there and not just compete with those guys, but uh, to win. And, and I think that because of all three phases of the game, and we've been really solid up front offensively and defensively. And no matter what, I know everybody talks about the back end and everybody talks about Desmond Ritter, but if you can be really good up front on both sides of the football, I think you got a chance in any game. Uh, your team has been great to watch this year, Luca. Uh, congratulations on the success, and we wish you the best of luck the rest of the way. Well, I appreciate it, Reese. I hope, uh, hope we continue to, to talk because uh, we're still in the mix. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.